It's great to be with everybody once again. So this um, video what I'd like to talk about is air pollution and health. Um, obviously COVID-19 is the forefront of everybody's mind, but I wanna, as we talk, start pivoting towards resilience, how do you make yourself maximally healthy so that when you get exposed to the storms of life, illnesses, family stressors, life stressors, that you can maintain your own personal health and just kind of sail through these storms. You know, you'll be shaken from side to side, but maintain your health. And so air quality is a huge, huge factor in that. So what I'd like to do is review a few studies talking about air quality and illness, and in, in, specifically in regards to COVID-19. But a brief summary, I think, for air quality is super important. One, we already know from, from data from NOAA, NOAA is the organization that tracks um, hurricanes every hurricane season, um, that we know from them that air quality, there's a direct correlation with air quality pollutants and things like rheumatoid antibodies, which is an autoimmune issue, um, cardiovascular disease, there's um, information from Vanderbilt looking at how many particles in the air. Um, and it's usually combustion particles like cars, um, diesel fuel, coal, these, these things that, you know, um, in, in third world countries or other countries where they use a lot of wood, it's wood burning inhaling those particles. But we know there's a correlation with cardiovascular disease. And then actually from UCLA, from some research from Dr. Bredenson out there, we know there's a correlation with a risk for inhalational Alzheimer's. You inhale microparticles of of, of basically um, pollution and you, it causes brain inflammation. So we, this is something new. This is not a new concept. So let's pivot a little bit and talk about COVID-19. And these studies will actually, the actual links will be posted below where these things are put. And um, we're going to be putting some of these articles out on social media as well, well with little summaries I've put out there and the actual links. So if you want to actually get these, um, either look below or start following us on social media as they get pushed out over the next several weeks. Um, the first one is actually, I'm um, looking at the United Kingdom, and they looked at about 80% of people living in urban areas that were exposed to high levels of, um, or being exposed to high levels of pollution higher than the amount recommended by the WHO, or the World Health Organization. And they saw these particles are down to less than, down to about 0.3 micro, microns, and that's important, I'll come back to that in a second. But they saw that all these people had increased risk for strokes, heart disease, um, Kids have more issues with heart issues, inflammatory conditions. You know, there's this thing, this inflammatory, pediatric inflammatory, um, post-infectious inflammatory condition that tends to occur in population centers like New York City. Um, maybe there's a correlation with those inflammatory conditions and inhaled particles. But it showed air pollution is a major factor in chronic illness. Um, that's the first thing. The second article was actually an air pollution article looking in northern Italy in relation to COVID-19. Okay, sounds Interesting, and it actually showed a correlation with air pollution exposure and severity of disease um, with COVID-19 in Northern Italy, and this was one of those population centers. So, interesting. Um, another, and this was actually, there's a big organization in the UK that looks at air pollution and chronic disease, and they show that um, some of these cities in, in Europe, it's equivalent to smoking like 150 cigarettes a day, and these are not population centers like you know Wuhan, uh, but these are like relative centers and just living there, it's like smoking 150 cigarettes a day. And they saw a lot of increased issues with illnesses. The air pollution was actually directly associated in China with case fatalities of SARS. Let me repeat that once again. And I quote, air pollution has even been associated with case fatality rate of SARS in China. So interesting. So air quality. Another one was actually air pollution. Um, and this is actually, again, from the UK, showing a direct correlation with air pollution and the risk from dying with SARS and other respiratory tract infections. Now, SARS was is, is SARS-CoV-1 is a predecessor of SARS-CoV-2, which is COVID-19. This is going back. This data was from probably, that was 2002 to 2003. So during that time, and it's also this also may help us explain why in Spain and certain parts of the UK we're seeing more serious respiratory um, issues with with this illness. Um, another article. And this is actually kind of an interesting article looking at um, air pollution as a major risk factor, not only for COVID-19, but also for asthma and COPD. Well, that's kind of makes sense. Um, the BBC actually put out this interesting article looking at air pollution killing 4.2 million people in the year, every um, in the world every year. So let me, let me say that one more time. Air pollution kills about 4.2 million people worldwide every year. Um, and there's another one from Medrix, which is the pre-publication um, uh, research that a lot of stuff's been pushed around now, looking at um, respiratory tr um, air pollution quality as a major um, risk factor for long-term complications of COVID-19. 
Um, and they actually looked at, with this, looked at over 3,000 counties in the United States. So this particular study represented um, over 98% of Americans. So 3,000 counties in the United States and it showed even small exposures to air pollution um, are showing an increased risk for COVID-19 death. Okay, all right, let me repeat that once again. In the United States, 3,000 counties that represent about 95% of the country, air pollution exposure is associated with an increased risk from COVID-19. So, okay, so so what? Well, this kind of goes into the whole um, functional mess and perspective. Your environment plays a role with your health, the food you eat, the water you drink, the air you breathe plays an important role with your health. Now, how can you change that now? Well, the, I did mention the 0.3 micron particles. A standard HEPA filter, not an ultra HEPA filter, but a regular HEPA filter filters down to 0.3 microns. So just going to your local store, Costco um, carries these um, and actually reasonably priced, usually about $120. You can remove 99.99% of these particles that you would be breathing otherwise. So simply a HEPA filter in your, in your master bedroom and your main living space is gonna remove these microparticles that lots of people breathe. Um, I live out in the country, um, out in Goochland, so it's um, outside of central Virginia, outside of the Richmond area in Virginia. So the area out here is relatively clean, lots of allergies, dust, mold, et cetera, like that. But in major cities, you know, downtown cities where you have um, railroad tracks, where you have intersections of um, 6495 here in Richmond or wherever you live, um, you're gonna have a lot more of these microparticles in the air and a simple HEPA filter can have significant impact, not only your quality of health, risk for heart disease, strokes, et cetera, et cetera, but asthma, COPD, and actually now COVID-19. That's something you can do now that actually can help improve your health. And we actually do talk about this in our survival guide, which is on our website. This was something I put in there back in March. So this is not new information per se, but it's information you can do to take charge of your health now. And in my personal opinion, knowing how building materials work, knowing how insulation works, how air and air trapping works in houses, how um, the binaural effect works in your house, knowing also well how um, air stacking works where air comes in your crawl space and up through your house. We probably all need HEPA filters in our bedrooms and our main living space. So and that's something we can all do that's gonna actually help improve our health. Um, hopefully this was useful. These articles, these links, I'm sorry, the links will be, will be posted below in um, YouTube. It's kind of hard to do this in Facebook and um, almost impossible on Instagram. Um, we will also be posting these articles and small snippets in social media over the next um, several weeks just for just to kind of remind us because um, I feel like we need to be reminded about the basic things. The basics are still the basics and the main thing still the main thing. And there are some basic things we can do for our health that can have major, major impacts. Um, you're not in this alone, we're in this together and there are things you can do to stay healthy. So again, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, uh, share it with your family and friends. Um, like us, follow us. That's also how more people can find this information. And um, stay safe. Be well.